Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Fabrice Arroyo. I'm a program director at GEM, Grenoble École de Management, School of Management. I'm in charge of the program dealing with energy management and marketing. And I'm very pleased to welcome you and thank for watching us. Hello, I'm Eric Claude. I am the CTO of Axan, uh, which is a small company uh, developing and making and uh, selling a fuel cell stack and system. This company is a subsidiary of the Air Liquid Group. And we try to answer your questions as best uh, as we can. <laughs> So probably uh, you're uh, some people on the other side, we, we don't see you. So one first question concerning the automobile industry is hydrogen. Oh, I missed the... We don't see the question yeah. anymore. Concerning the automobile industry, is hydrogen more energy efficient than <coughs> diesel? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. At the level of the car itself, uh, Hydrogen will be consumed with a fuel cell, transforming its energy, chemical energy into electricity. And uh, uh, the efficiency of the conversion from chemical to electricity uh, with the fuel cell is about uh, 50%. Uh, on the diesel, I think it's uh, two times less or something like this, maybe 20, 25%. I don't have in mind precisely the number of the efficiency of the diesel engine, but anyway, uh, this efficiency is double if you're using uh, uh, hydrogen with a fuel cell. About. Uh, this, I have to admit that this does not take into account the energy you need to produce the hydrogen. So the global efficiency uh, could maybe be comparable with diesel, but uh, with no uh, bad emission, I mean, no pollution, no CO2 clean, uh, efficient, globally. Yeah. <laughs> Another question or not? Yes. Yeah? Question two, what are the current hydrogen interesting innovation projects in France and in Europe? So, large questions. Uh, perhaps you're better than me to answer, I uh, think. I'm, you know, I'm, unfortunately, I'm, I'm well aware of the project we have in Air Liquid and, uh, and Axan, and I'm not sure I can answer to all the projects in France. I'm not aware of all of them, mm. for sure. But I can say that uh, uh, globally there is a stationary uh, project uh, and also automotive. We know that uh, we have some companies in France who uh, have a big ambition to to develop and to produce fuel cell for cars uh, it can be i mean regular car and also small fuel cell for for small cars i mean um, the fuel cell used as a range extender uh, it means uh, it's for electrical cars they have batteries but the autonomy of the car is not uh, enough so we we add a small fuel cell to double or more the efficiency of the of the cars and i know that um, i would maybe answer more generally than only france because we are an international context that globally uh, the intensity of project and not only project but commercialization of fuel cell and hydrogen energy is increasing faster and faster everywhere in the world so for sure it would be the same in france there's a, um, a big project in the south part of France dealing with the power to gas. Uh, so to inject the the wind power, I mean in electricity to hydrogen in the the gas grid. Uh, so I think if I am not making a mistake, it is called Jupiter. So it's near a city called Force near Marseille, and uh, that's more a R&D project. But uh, it could be very interesting. I mean to especially to balance the grid when the wind power is very high and consumption is very low. I mean, in the overall grid, uh, national grid, uh, for instance, in France. But I think there's also uh, similar projects in Germany, for instance. And uh, if I remember well, we have maybe projects starting with trucks. Uh, and we also have maritime uh, project or 
for boats or not only in the in the sea but also on on rivers uh in some places in the west of france so i don't remember precisely i'm sorry so question four i've read that a startup ic labs raised two million euros for solid hydrogen transportation do you know uh, what it's <laughs> too too quick to to read all the question but yes uh I know I see lab just, uh, you know how they can do H2 solid transportation, 2 million euros will, will be enough? <laughs> For sure not, but uh, <laughs> I'll let you answer to the first part of the question. But oh, I know uh, just the, the start, is it a startup near uh, if, if Marseille? I I think, uh, yeah. uh, if I remember well, because I'm not part of this company, mm. uh, it's a it's, uh, uh, process, chemical process with silicate. Uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, they add water or something like mm -hmm. this, and liquid, it, uh, yeah. liquid water, and mm -hmm. produce uh, on-site uh, on-site hydrogen. So of course it's very interesting because you don't have to uh, to have a, uh, to store high, to store mm -hmm. high pressure cylinders uh, because it's very big. You also have issues with high pressures. Mm -hmm. So with the silicate, you don't have that kind of issue. So it's it's very good. You just add the water when you need hydrogen. Sounds quite easy. And uh, but to to answer if uh, two million euro will be enough to develop their product, uh, their technology, and the commercialization, I have no idea. I mean, no, it's only I think seed them. seed investment. It's uh, a a round, as we 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 say in the uh, venture capital industry. So it's only the first step, the first I mean uh, serious step to uh, to to start the development. But it's mainly seed investments and R&D for, for, for the moment, currently. Another one. Will the climate change and the sea level rise affect in any way the tidal uh, technology? Uh, so now it's about tidal technology. So I know a bit about that. Uh, so the question was uh, how, about the impact of the... Of the climate change. Mm. Now, the main issue is tides. <laughs> so, will the uh, climate change impact tides? I don't know. Uh, difficult to say, I think. Uh, but it's mainly about tides uh, and tides models in the world. So, difficult to answer. I cannot now. Big what are the current big projects of tidal energy in Europe besides UK? Not many, I guess. Not many. Uh, in France, there are one or two, especially with uh, one small company called Sabella. I hope that they, they are going on, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but I think they were close to NG. NG company and they I think they, they probably keep on uh, developing uh, their R&D turbines but it's a very long process so I think there are again many years to to um, to arrive to to be able to uh, industrialize it um, and we have to add also that they are in a close competition and not favorable against uh, the offshore power, wind power, uh, which is uh, more mature. So I think it's a bit difficult period for Tidal, um, except from some kind of, uh, we call it niche in French. Uh, so very, very close markets and applications. So what, what about the use, use of, of H2 in ICEs? ICEs, what is ICEs? Okay. <laughs> we, we did not understood the, understand the acronym. Yeah, maybe it's a... Uh, I think I saw that once, but... Um, maybe it's talking about the... Uh, the fact that we use hydrogen, or may, anyway, maybe it's an interesting topic anyway, uh, we use hydrogen to to store energy. Like you say, a big project in South of France, uh, you use the wind or the, or the sun, you you 
you have a lot of electricity sometimes you, when you don't need it and uh, you produce hydrogen with that it's a way to store to store the energy and then you can bring uh, you can do back uh, electricity on the same site or you can you can send the hydrogen to another place where you will use it so if i see he's talking about that i don't know i mean it could be a big uh, big role Combustor, combustion, ah, combustion engine, engine vehicle. No, combustion engine with uh, with hydrogen is ah. not that very interesting mm. uh, because uh, uh, you, we are co going back on the question of efficiency. When you have an co internal combustion engine, you cannot have a very high efficiency. It's, it's nothing you can do about it. So uh, you will use um, uh, a fuel, uh, maybe more expensive or not so easy, uh, to get because uh, when you want hydrogen you don't have a lot of hydrogen in the world so you have to make it uh, uh, on the contrary when you you want to have oil you just have to to take it from the ground let's say so it's uh, it's supposed to be easier and cheaper so when you do hydrogen you have to save efficiency because it's also saving a lot of costs so if you go to combustion engine the efficiency will be low about as low as it is in diesel engine so it's a very big disadvantage to use this technology. On the principle, it's possible, but it's not efficient enough. So uh, I think that today no one thinks that we will do this in the future. Only BMW in the past yeah. tried to do it, uh, but they gave up. Huh? They gave up because they realized that uh, the option was no good. Fuel cell is much more interesting in terms of efficiency and so on. And you have also a disadvantage with uh, another disadvantage with the internal combustion engines. Uh, it operates at a very high temperature. And uh, like the, the usual combustion engine we have today. And the fuel cell, the PEM fuel cell we use in cars is operating at very low temperature. Many times it's even below 100 degrees. Uh, so in that case, you don't produce shocks or NOx. But when you're going back to a high temperature like you will have in combustion engine, you will start to produce again SOX and NOx. That's very stupid. You get lower efficiency and you produce pollutant. Why Japanese and Korean car manufacturers are in advance in hydrogen mobility? <laughs> They put a lot of money on the table. Mm -hmm. I not I don't know precisely about Korea, but I know that in Japan, Japan yeah. for a long time, uh, and since long time, the the government uh, like the a lot of time do in Japan with the big companies. They just make a big group together and they say, okay, we put money on the table and we go. Uh, they are sometimes long to decide in this in that country, but when they decide something like this, I mean, they are so strong. I, I'm I'm not sure, but. I think that probably Toyota, uh, Toyota I guess, is more yeah. advanced company, mm -hmm. um, probably in the world with fuel mm -hmm. cell cars, uh, spend more than one bi one billion euro on, the, on that program, probably maybe two billion. I don't know, but I think it's, it's an effort for a long time and with a lot of money. Okay, and this question in the transition of energy and especially on the impact on the land use. I'm interested if there are initiatives for cooperation between oh, region and <laughs> between regions to develop an extended grid. Uh, you mean in Europe? Uh, it's still the case. Um, pro probably in, uh, in other regions like uh, as Africa. Or... I'm not sure to understand it's, exactly. It's quite the... general. Uh, so obviously, there are inter interconnection in, in mm. electricity grids in in uh, Europe, for instance, mm. from south to north and east to to west. Uh, in the US, uh, it's not so developed, I think, um, especially between even inside the United States. It's not so um, so intense. So um, uh, there are few few grids, I guess. But I'm not a specialist on the U.S. grids. But it's not so. It could be reinforced. So um, I mean, the the most advanced interconnected grid is in Europe for for sure. Mm. 
Mm. Well, I, absolutely no, I have no idea about uh, that kind of question. I'm not a specialist, but I know only that if you want to, if, if we see it as worldwide scale, uh, to to say okay, we for example we'll produce electricity electricity with solar panel in some place in the world and bring the electricity on the mm. other side of the world. If it's something like this. We know that uh, it's not easy um, to transport electricity on very, very long distance. Uh, the losses are very high. So that's also why the idea is more probably to produce electricity on one side and with the electricity, if you don't use it uh, around, to, uh, to transform the electricity into hydrogen and then to transport the hydrogen. Mm. There was a big project uh, called uh, Desert Tech to produce uh, massive solar electricity from Sahara and to export it uh, to Europe. But it failed uh, two years ago, I, I guess. Uh, I would just saw uh, another so, question. If we encountered resistance for local authorities in the process or when you yes, say... Yes, and, and? H2 project. Uh, can you read it? Yeah. yeah, indeed. Is there local resistance on H2 project or on the over <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> okay so it was about uh resistance or endorsements about on the other side political endorsement what about z zv zero emission valley in run up uh yes in the past this happened i remember well because in Nexan we long ago we did project with some small vehicles and also um, not that long ago we start with we wanted to install the first forklift fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell, uh, in France. And uh, we encountered resistance, but it was not from uh, local authorities, I mean, uh, like for in, in the region or, or cities. It was more because the regulation was not, were not adapted. So the people in charge of the, the authority in charge of that, say, giving the approval, yes, you can do the project. So the project is to put a vehicle on the road or, or forklift. Uh, they were, it was not easy to, to, to be accepted to get the approval, but it was more because the regulation was not adapted. But I have to say that this situation was very difficult 10 or even maybe sometime five years ago, but it's getting better and better and we see almost no more resistance or, or not a lot. So we are waiting for new <laughs> questions from you. I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> With more and more actors involving in space exploration, SpaceX, NASA, ESA, etc., will hydrogen fuel cells technology become more popular? I think yes. Uh, you think the, the um, last yes can and, competitive. and competitive, but for for space applications, you mean? So for space application. Uh, yes, it would be used. It's already used. In fact, in the space, uh, uh, there's many kind of solutions you cannot use. You cannot uh, use a, a classical uh, uh, internal combustion engine. You don't have air around. Uh, and in that case, uh, fuel cell and hydrogen will be adapted to the situation. Uh, for example, the first big example, and it exists from a long time, it's uh, the, the rockets, uh, like iron. The, uh, like iron, I mean, the propulsion is, is made with hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and after after that, people in the ESA and etc. are thinking about uh, using the hydrogen plus oxygen because you don't have air in the space, so you have to, to use oxygen and to use these gases and also fuel cell to produce electricity, it can be in a, in a spacecraft shuttle, or it can be also, in, a, for example, in a base on, on the moon. Uh, and uh, we have in Air Liquide and uh, Accent discussion, for example, with the ESA and the people also, uh, uh, Astronaut Center in, in Germany, to maybe uh, try to, to use our technology, uh, to imagine how we can adapt this technology for a lunar, uh, a lunar base. And also, I mean, it can be stationary uh, put on the moon, and then you produce electricity for the need of the base and also for small vehicles there. And will the involvement of more actors have reduced the cost of the production? 
the cost of production of hydrogen. Mm, yes, for sure, today, um, uh, the production of hydrogen, uh, it's not mainly for uh, energy, it's for chemical industry. Uh, so we still have the old way to produce hydrogen and also the old way to organize the logistic of hydrogen. And with the hydrogen energy, we are coming in a new world where everything will be adapted for this new need. Uh, and uh, today, uh, today, that's true that uh, as the need for hydrogen energy is low, uh, the cost of the production and the logistic, etc., is high because the volume of the demand is low. And this cost will decrease with, uh, with higher volumes. Difficult to say exactly uh, how fast uh, will be the decrease of cost and if, we, if at the end the cost will be very low. But the ideas that the people have around, I'm, when I'm talking with my colleagues, the early kids specialists of this, they say that probably it will be competitive compared to the, um, to the cost of oil today for, for cars. Another question. What are the innovation projects of Axan and Air Liquid? Can you tell them about can you tell us about them? Um, unfortunately, as I'm very busy with the with the project of Axan, uh, and I have not enough time to be totally aware of all the projects of Air Liquid because I know there's a lot and in many places in the world. But uh, so it would be easier to talk about the Axan project. But if I anyway try to start to talk about the Air Liquid one first, I know that the main things with hydrogen is a refueling station. Uh, Air Liquid is involved in many organizations in the world to increase, uh, together with other players of, of the domain, to increase the number of uh, hydrogen refueling stations on the road. Uh, in fact, uh, it's always the same. The people who, who are making a fuel cell cars, they say, OK, we cannot sell a lot of cars because there is no refueling station. So the people cannot use the car. and. Uh, so they ask early kids and early kids say, okay, but if we put a lot of refueling station, uh, as there's not a lot of car, uh, I mean, it's useless. So we try all the people to be all together and to start to increase a little bit the number of cars on the road and also uh, the number of hydrogen stations. I think this is a big, big, big uh, uh, project today. There's also a big project with biogas, but uh, I'm not aware of the details, so I prefer not to enter into that. And uh, for uh, Axan, uh, we are very small, so we cannot, I mean, it's, it's also a small project. And unfortunately, we have customers who like to, to keep the secret on their project. So I can say that it's more uh, technology development of a fuel cell system working in very specific way. For example, I was mentioning possible application in the space. Uh, we also did uh, work in maritime project. And we also do some development of stack, which is the art of the fuel cell system for, uh, for example, uh, car automotive, uh, uh, car industries or other application. And uh, drones too? Or? Not drones, because um, today our technology is uh, not adapted to, to drone. It's, uh, the power is a little bit high. And mm -hmm. for I, if we wanted to do uh, a power adapted to drones, um, our system would be very heavy. Yeah, okay. Because it's yeah, a technology. Yeah, it's a, our technology is like this. Mm. But maybe there was another question. Yes. We missed one, yeah. Yeah, we missed one, I think. Fabrice, can you read it? I, uh, okay. I, I don't see it. <laughs> Make an effort. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which are the most important factors that influence the location of a new production facility, transportation costs, local regulation, acceptance, da da da. Too quick. Link to the grid. Can you detail that? Link to the grid. I cannot understand. Could could you put me again? Can we not? have this this it's question? Too, again? Is it possible? Too too quickly, yeah. Which are the most important factors that influence the location of a new production facility? There are many. Obviously, infrastructures. We could be also markets. Mm. So it's it's uh, many amenities, uh, as we can say, electricity, energy, uh, roads, uh, transports, uh, mm -hmm. markets, uh, R and D, human resources. Uh. <laughs> if it's hydrogen production for a liquid, uh, yeah. I think the main 
will be the, the market, the customers. You, you produce the hydrogen uh, close to your customers. Mm. Uh, and it's more obvious if it's for large quantities, because mm. in fact, the transportation and logistics of hydrogen costs a lot. It's, it's why, for example, a, a company like Air Liquid is present uh, all over the world mm. in many, many, many countries, because it's not that, in fact, easy to transport gas. It's very light hydrogen, so you would think mm. that it will be easy, but in fact, you put a container, steel container, the steel mm. container is very heavy, and, and the, all that logistic uh, compression uh, transportation has a high cost, so you produce close to your customers. And even Air Liquide is well known to produce it on site, on the customer site, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, in some uh, cases, we produce the hydrogen at customer site mm. for, for big customers. Uh, if you are, uh, I mean, uh, someone you need just one cylinder in one place, okay. You, are, you will find a sailor somewhere, okay, so we'll transport the, the bundle. But uh, after that, uh, you can, uh, you, we will uh, transport uh, big trucks with big uh, cylinders uh, of gases. And if you are a bigger customer, you, we will start to, to connect you to, to a pipeline. Uh, and then if you're even bigger than that, we will produce, we will build the, the plant, the production plant, at your place. Do you think that EDF, so the French utility, will join NG in H2 energy initiatives? You should ask uh, EDF. <laughs> Please ask them. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. That's probable one are, day, but. Uh, are other utilities active on H2 energy? Yes, but N NG, you, you mentioned it just, uh, just before. And uh, probably some Germans. I guess. Oh, in the in the hydrogen field. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know it, but I guess uh, uh, energy producer in that field. Yeah. No, yeah. they they were uh, talking about uh, groups, uh, utilities dealing with hydrogen or investing in. Uh, yes, there is in and uh, not only in Germany. I don't know. Precisely. Probably in Germany because in Germany it's I think well developed. Yeah, yeah. they are very active. Yeah. What is the origin of your hydrogen, the source? Oh, today mainly uh, it's natural gas. Mainly gas, but it could be also water, but water is a very, very small part of the hydrogen source. The, the idea is there is today and there is tomorrow. Uh, today we are still on the old, old story, uh, making hydrogen mainly from uh, natural gas. Uh, we with a reformer. You produce hydrogen. Of course, it's it's not very nice because you're still making CO2. So everyone knows that we have to move to a new way to produce mm -hmm. hydrogen from solar, wind, etc. So there is a question about solar. What is the environmental impact of manufacturing PV panels? Ooh, uh, <laughs> it's not so easy. Um, I think the, the bad impact is uh, when you are uh, warming a lot the silicon. So the main impact is at the start of the, 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 the producing chain. On the, um, but uh, there is a, a kind of, um, a kind of uh, accounting uh, figures about the impact of panels um rather to their production and we i think it is con considered that after it's between three to five years of, of production uh the energy balance is uh is positive i don't know if you understand me well but uh yeah. and when you know that the panels is producing for more than 20 years could be 30 even uh so it it gives you an idea of the environmental impact of the production of uh, solar PV panels. Will solar technology become more popular than wind in the futures? <laughs> uh, I think perhaps it's it, it is it is uh, it is the case now. I mean, the advantage of solar PV is uh, flexibility. You can put it almost everywhere, even in in very cloudy and of northern countries not very efficient but the main advantage is flexibility 
it's not very huge investment it's very, very small with the, the drop in costs uh, mainly due to uh, massive Chinese productions. So I think this is already now perhaps the most popular um, renew re sorry, renewable energies, especially for emerging, emerging countries as Africa, for instance. Another question? Let's go back to um, hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Do you consider to move soon to green hydrogen business? Uh, I know and that. If not, why? Oh, but we we are moving. We are moving step by step. But uh, uh, at least um, I know that for air liquid, air liquid is moving to green hydrogen. Air liquid is moving to green hydrogen. We cannot uh, move one hundred percent in one day. So it's step by step. But uh, more and more of our the hydrogen. Is, is green today. And that's also why, for example, Air Liquid did invest quite a lot in uh, bio, in bio, in biogas, because it's a way to also to produce more globally gases, green gases. And also because at the end, we know that it's a possible way to make hydrogen. Uh, biogas can be, can be transformed to, to hydrogen. In that case, it would be green. So unfortunately, I don't have a number in mind. What is today the percentage of green hydrogen? I know it's it's uh, it's quite low today, but it's increasing uh, year after year. It's increasing, and uh, I think all the the people, the actors in in the domain, they understood that uh, they have to do that. Just to add a, a, a perhaps a, a detail, which is not a detail. To, to produce uh, hydrogen from water, you need electricity. So you need also uh, green sources of electricity. So that means mm -hmm. uh, mainly uh, it could be wind, it could be solar, it could be hydraulics. So it's a, it's a system. It's not so easy, I mean, to, um, to uh, transform uh, the, the recurrent hydrogen production to a green uh, production. Not so easy. Yeah. So if you if you're producing hydrogen, let's say uh, with uh, coal, it's not a good news. <laughs> it's not green hydrogen. Yeah. And today, if you want to make a green hydrogen from uh, renewable energy, the cost of hydrogen is higher than the one you produce with natural gas. So See, it's ten times. I I, uh, I, I don't I around. Don't know, but in I, France, I know it's, France, it, yeah. it's it's really more expensive. Mm. So people are working and working to to decrease that cost difference. But because you can understand that you cannot ask a big company making gas to just stop uh, all uh, production from natural gas uh, like this it would kill the, the company so we go step by step and uh, but it it's coming it's coming no question okay. any question more we are, we are waiting for for you for your questions Probably we succeed to answer to all the questions you, you had. So no more questions? Is it okay? <laughs> we don't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you for uh, watching us mm -hmm. and uh, listening to our comments. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, they were good, that we you understood and you will be able to understand uh, better all these uh, uh, topics about uh, mainly hydrogen and a bit biogas because no more question about biogas and uh, so we just waiting for you to uh, keep on uh, listening and uh, learning with our MOOC thank you for watching and learning bye yeah thank you for watching goodbye